Shalom, Shalom. I want to welcome you in this program of Dwell in His Presence to hear the Word of God from His altar. At this beautiful moment which we want you to gather yourself, gather your mind together, put yourself together so that you can get ready to hear the Word of God from His altar. Our Lord Jesus Christ, I just want to thank you, Lord God Almighty, for this wonderful moment that you have given us. As we dedicate ourselves unto your hands, I ask you, Lord, for you to be with us. Open our spiritual ears, open our spiritual hearts, so that we can hear from you what you are just about to teach us, O oh Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you and I dedicate each and every person who is with us now, listening, hearing this word. I dedicate him unto your hands for you, Lord, to be with him. Holy Spirit, we leave everything into your hands as you are going to start teaching us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, we are going to enter into another session. In our previous lesson, we saw that the Word of God is our foundation. It's the foundation of our lives. And we need to read the Word of God because it is our spiritual food. With the Word of God, we grow spiritually. And that it builds us up in our spiritual life and we grow. This is what we learned in the previous lesson. So when, this, uh, when the Word of God builds us up, it makes us grow spiritually. And there we gain strength, we gain the power, so that we can stand and defeat the enemy. So when we see people calling themselves that they are saved, but they don't have the power of God in them. They cannot exercise the power of God in their lives. They cannot experience the power of God in their lives. It is because they lack the word of God in them. There are people who they don't want to take trouble of uh, reading the word of God, neither meditating the word, or even getting a Bible of themselves, of their selves, of themselves to have time by themselves to read the word of God. They don't want to take that trouble. They don't want to bother themselves. They just want to live uh, uh, relaxing, thinking that things will work out. Let me tell you, my brother, Satan is working, Satan is at work, and we need to defeat him. And we cannot defeat him unless we stand with the word. And for us to stand with the word, we need to know the word. And how do we know the word if we can't take trouble of reading the word? We can't take trouble of being the, the doers of the word. Because being the doer of the word, that makes you exercise the, 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 the goodness of the Lord in your life. And it gives you strength. You are going to be strengthened in order to defeat the devil. There are people who can use money to buy other things, to buy expensive things and big, big things, but they cannot afford to buy a Bible. Let me tell you, my friend, the Bible is your tool. The Bible is the very important thing in your life because that's where the Word of God dwells. That is where, when you use the Word in the Bible, you are able to defeat the devil. So you can miss everything, but you have the Word of God. Then you have everything. Hallelujah. Now, if we are saved, we have to make sure that we get a Bible of our own so that we can have time of our own to read it. Because that is our food. What is inside the Bible, that is food to us. That makes us grow. And when we learn the Word of God, we grow. We take trouble to read the word. We take trouble to become the doers of the word. And there our spiritual life changes. Because the word of God, it transforms us. And when we stick and stand with the word of God, that is where the Holy Spirit comes and reveals himself through the word of God. The word of God gives the Holy Spirit 
the power to manifest himself and to reveal himself into your life. It is through the word of God. Because I said this in the previous lesson that the Holy Spirit cannot work outside the word of God because he can never be against the word of God. Being against the word of God is being against Jesus. Now, for us who we are saved, it is vital to read the word of God because that's when we gain health, spiritual health. The word of God is our foundation. If we are not reading the word or if we don't read the word of God, we become weak. The same as if we don't eat food, we become ill. We become weak. And when we become weak, that's when sickness, diseases follow us. And if you don't read the word of God, you give the devil the power to follow you. You give the devil the power to come and torment you. Because when he looks at you, he sees that there is no word in you. So the room is empty. He can come and feed you with his food and destroy you. And that is why we find many people who are saved, but they are living in sin. How does it work? It's because they lack the word of God. When we live in the word of God, the, the word makes us to reflect Jesus Christ. The person who does not read the word of God, you will know him. Knowing his weaknesses or recognizing his weaknesses, it is when you see him reflecting the world. His, his character will reflect the world. No matter how he will claim that he is saved, but we will know them through their deeds. We will know them through their fruits. If their fruits reflect the world, then something is wrong with this person. We find many people living in sin, but in their mouth they proclaim that they are saved. It doesn't matter if you are a preacher, neither you are a singer, singing the gospel music or what, or you will sing in the choir, or you are a teacher, you teach the word of God, or you are a pastor. It doesn't matter. What matters is how do you live your testimony of your life. That is what matters a lot because that is what shows to the world that you reflect Christ. When you interact yourself with the worldly life, that is a sign of a person who is unhealthy spiritually. Unhealthy person is a sick person. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in the first book of John, chapter 3, verse 4 up to verse 8, the Bible says that anybody who lives in sin, he is of the devil. Because the Son of God was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. If we continue living in sin, it means that we belong to the devil. This is the Bible. It's not me who I'm saying. And this word, this scripture has come to remind us not to continue living in sin. And in this, the Bible says that everything is open. The children of God are open. You will know them by their fruit. And the children of Satan, you will know them by their fruit. So it's not a matter of me saying that I am a child of God. It is a matter of me being the doer of the word of God. That will make me reflect Christ in my life. And when people want to see Christ, they will see him in me. Hallelujah. But when we are not fed well in the spiritual or in our spirits, we become weak spiritually and we feel sick. We look unhealthy spiritually. In the book of John, chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus Christ was praying for us and he prayed to his Father, telling, to, telling his Father that to allow his word, to allow his truth to sanctify us. We are sanctified by his word. The more we continue reading his word, the more the word continues sanctifying us. 
the word of God has a great job of sanctifying us, transforming us. And that is why in the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 3 to verse 7, it talks about destroying the stronghold of our thoughts in our minds. Because whatever you receive, what you re- if we receive the word of God, if we read the word of God, if we meditate the word of God, if we become the doer of the word of God, it goes in us and build a stronghold of the word of God in us, in our thoughts and in our minds, in our hearts. Because what we receive, the food we eat, it becomes the bricks to build up strongholds in us, in, in our hearts. And that is when we become strong. And that is when, when Satan comes to attack us, never to destroy us, we are able to recognize him and defeat him in Jesus' name. If we receive the word of God, it means we are buried in the world. Another thing that we need to consider, it is prayer. Prayer in salvation, we need to pray very hard and very strongly. Because prayer goes and opens up heaven for us. With prayers, we receive answers from God. Daniel prayed and he received answers. Jesus Christ, he prayed. He's our mentor. He prayed. He didn't cease praying. He didn't stop praying. He didn't stop praying because he was the son of God. He prayed because when Jesus was on this earth, he was with flesh. He was in flesh. And for him to be fit or to be able to subject that flesh under the power and the leadership and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, he had to pray. So we also need to pray. We need to be a prayerful people so that our lives can be subjected under the power, under the the control of the Holy Spirit. Being said does not mean that it is enough, that everything is going to take place just like that. No, we need to pray because Satan is at work. We need to understand that God is holy and Jesus prayed because he was in flesh. And because God is holy, Jesus had to be with He was to be like his father. And now here he is in flesh. So he had to pray hard in order to win this battle of subjecting his flesh. Some people, they think that, or even some say that God knows. Our God is a merciful God. Yes, our God is a merciful God, but not for you who knows sin. Remember, you knew that you were a sinner, and that is why you left sin and you got saved. Now, why are you going back to sin and saying that God knows he's he's a merciful God? Why didn't you think of this before you got saved? Because by that time, you were living with his mercy until when you got saved. After getting saved now, it is by grace that you are saved. That you need to live according to his will. You need to live according to his will. So God doesn't know what you think he knows. But God is holy and never in any day he will compromise with sin. Sin needs to be repented and not to be compromised. And many Christians are now compromising with sin. Thinking God that he is just going to see them and uh, accept them the way they are. He accepted you the way you are when you were a sinner. And that's why he forgave you. And you entered the kingdom of God. Now you want to bring those things that you used to live with there in the kingdom of Satan. You want to legalize them and enter them in the kingdom of God. Thinking that God will compromise with that. Let me tell you my brother and my sister. God will never ever even in one day to compromise with sin. Never. Because sin needs to be repented. Not to be compromised. So we are 
supposed to live according to his will. And that is why the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 14 that those who are led by the Spirit of the Lord, those they are his children. So we need to be led by his Spirit in order to fulfill his will because that is what makes us to be his children. That is what makes us to be counted righteous and be his children. God bless you. Let me pray. Father, I want to bless you again for this wonderful word that you have given us today. As I dedicate each and everybody unto your hands who has heard, have been listening to this uh, session. Lord, I ask you, Lord, for you to feed them with your power to strengthen them so that they can stand faithfully before you. I know we are human beings. We are not able. We cannot manage by ourselves. And that is why you gave us the Holy Spirit to make us live according to our Father's will. Now I dedicate each and every person unto your hands. I ask you, Lord, for you to help us. Holy Spirit, be there for us. Guide us. Lead us into the right path so that we can uh, uh, we can please our Father. Thank you, O Lord God Almighty. In the name of Jesus Christ, as I dedicate each and every person unto your hands, I ask you, Lord, for you to be with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.